Hey, what's up? My name is Tony and today we're talking about Canon log footage. I'm going to share with you my thoughts on if you should always film in log footage. <music> Like I said, my name is Tony. I'm a filmmaker photographer in the St. Louis area. Just a quick welcome to all of you new subscribers that came along this past few weeks. We've gotten a ton of new subscribers, which is cool. Hey, I've only got like 400 subs, but we're having fun and we're learning together. I'm excited about this journey and having fun making these videos. If there's a specific topic you'd like for me to cover, let me know in the comments and we'll maybe make it happen. Today we're talking about Canon log footage, specifically on the EOS R because that's a lot of the videos that I've been doing lately because I really believe in this camera and I'm excited about it. I've used tons of different log. I've used Canon log, I've used Sony log, DJI and GoPro. They even have their own flat profiles. And so we're gonna talk about some of the difference between picture profiles and Canon log or log in general. And then we'll talk about some of the times when you definitely should use it and maybe some times when you just don't need to use log footage or maybe you shoot in it all the time. I don't know. That's what we're talking about today. So let's get into it. The first thing I want to talk about is what is log footage? For those of you who are unfamiliar, log footage is a very flat recording of your video. So that means the highlights are brought down, the low lights are brought up. So everything's kind of grayscaled, your saturation has dropped a little bit. And what that does is it allows it to capture all of those details in there without crushing any of them. It's kind of like shooting raw photos, but not quite. There's more data in there to work with, but with raw photos, you can actually control your white balance. You can control, you know, you can add different picture profiles that are baked into your camera already. With log footage, that's not the case. There's actually raw footage for video, but it's huge and most cameras can't shoot on it yet, especially the size of the EOS R. Now, really excited about the 1DX Mark III that's coming out next year. That will supposedly shoot in raw, which is pretty awesome. The Canon C200 does it. I use that quite a bit and uh, honestly, I just don't shoot in raw because the files are gigantic. They're huge, but they look so good and you get so much content and data in there to work with. So log footage, it's still an 8-bit profile, especially on uh, the EOS R. There's also a 10-bit externally recording, meaning if you can plug into the HDMI cable and then you can record 10-bit 4K video, which looks really good. And basically the difference between 8-bit and 10-bit is it's more data. That means it captures more color and more data for you to work with. The downside, the file sizes are bigger, but I really don't care about file size. I really care about quality. If I really want to record in 10-bit, if I need that hero shot, then I'm going to record in it. That's one of the things I love about Canon. Yeah, the file sizes are bigger than some of the other brands, but they're so nice to work with. You can color so many different things, even straight out of the box. The color looks really good. So log footage, back to it. Basically, it doesn't have a look added to the footage. Now, if you look through some of the picture profiles on the Canon, they all have a specific look when it comes to how much contrast is in the photo or video, how much saturation, how deep the blacks are, how bright the whites are. All of those things are a picture profile. And there's times when it's very easy to just take off the log footage, put on that picture profile for the look that you want, and then boom, you're done. It's that simple. But log has several different advantages. So let's talk about them. The first one is that you get way more dynamic range out of your video footage. What I mean by dynamic range is that you're gonna be able to retain the data that's in the whites and the blacks. So if you shoot too dark, all of your darks are gonna be black pixels, meaning you can't bring them up or color them really. They're just ugly black pixels. It's the same for whites. If you shoot too high exposed, your whites are gonna be overexposed. A great example of this is a, is a sky. You expose for your subject in the middle of the frame and the sky is completely blown out because they're standing in a shadow. Well, with log footage, you've got a little bit more range that you can work with. The difference is, is that you have to push those in post-production when you're in your computer, you have to color grade it so that you can bring out some of those uh, highlights and lowlights depending on what you need to do. 
that's a big advantage is to get some more dynamic range out of that. Another really big benefit of shooting a log footage is that you can match the footage. You can match different cameras and different color profiles, which you can with a baked in picture profile, but it's a lot harder because that already has contrast, saturation, coloring already baked into the image, kind of like a JPEG. Your JPEG photo has a look and a style and a color already. When it's shot in raw, you can change all of those details uh, without just putting on more colors. And one more benefit of shooting in log is that you can heavily grade the footage for a specific look that doesn't even look real. Like when you shoot in a picture profile, most of them look fairly neutral. With log footage, you can actually color it extensively, make the trees really pop even a different color, maybe a really red instead of green, or your oranges you can change to a different hue, all of those things a lot easier without things falling apart. And when I say falling apart, I mean, typically you can see it in the blacks where if you crush your blacks, they start to look really blotchy and, and blocky, and uh, you can get away with pushing your colors a lot more with log footage than you can with regular picture profiles. All right, so now let's take a few minutes. I wanna share with you some of the times when maybe you shouldn't shoot in log footage. The first one is when you really don't know how to color. You don't, you haven't spent much time color grading. You don't understand your electroscopes and your RGBs and your, all of those waveforms. Like all of those things are tools to help you understand when you're pushing your footage too far. And if you don't have a good grasp on those, it's gonna take you three times longer to pump out the same kind of video because you have to figure out how to grade it. And it may not even look as good as a picture profile because you don't know what you're doing. So, obviously the way that you get to know what you're doing is by doing it. But, if you're pushing out a video as fast as you can, you don't know how to color grade, I would suggest potentially using a picture profile. Another time I would suggest potentially not using log footage is if you want to use some features that the camera has that are disabled when you're using log footage. A good example of this is the auto ISO. When I'm flying my EOS R, a lot of times I will use auto ISO for exposure. I'll lock in my shutter speed, I'll lock in my aperture, and then I'll let the camera choose the exposure based on the, the ISO. You can't do this with log footage, but you can do this with a picture profile. It's kind of a nice feature and sometimes you need to just use those kind of shots. One more time that I've seen an advantage of not using log footage is in specific low light situations. So I was shooting a wedding last summer on the 5D Mark IV in log for most of the day. It looked really good, but when we got to the evening, it was outside. They had zero lights except for these tungsten light Edison bulb, whatever they're called. It looked beautiful in person, but it was very dark. And I noticed that with the 5D Mark IV, as soon as you start cranking that ISO, the footage looked really bad, really bad, grainy, nasty. So what I ended up doing is taking off log footage, put on a picture profile that was fairly neutral so that I could add some coloring to make it look like the log footage. And I shot without log for the uh, reception outside in the dark. And honestly, I think it turned out really nice. So if it's pushing your camera past its capabilities to shoot in log footage, I would suggest just don't shoot in it. It's, it's not breaking any rules. You can still color it. It's just, it may end up looking better in some low light situations. Believe it or not, this shot is actually filmed in a picture profile. I'm not using log. I just added a little bit of some coloring on top of it to make it pop. But other than that, I'm just shooting a picture profile because I just want to push this video out and let you see the advantages of using log. I don't need to grade them. And honestly, most of my vlogs are just using picture profiles. Now, a lot of the footage that I do for clients, yes, I shoot that in log because I'm gonna be matching it with other things. I'm probably gonna put their kind of look and color in there and that log footage helps me to be able to do that. But all that being said, don't be afraid to shoot in picture profiles. Even as a professional, I'll do that quite a bit just because it looks so good. 
One more quick thought before we wrap this thing up. If your camera is not equipped with log footage, you still can download a picture profile, Cine style or EOS HD to stick on your camera. I used to do this with my ADD and it would give you a little bit more bump of range in your dynamic range. Also, you just were able to capture a little bit more. I would suggest playing around with it. If anything, it will help you learn how to color a little bit. So you can shoot in some of that picture profile that's very flat and desaturated and you can kind of play around with coloring to see what you can do with it. Then when you move up to a camera that has log, you're already familiar a little bit with some of those settings. That's just another tip that I would suggest doing. All right, it's getting long. This video is probably already over 10 minutes, so let's lay in the plane. If this is a video that has helped you, if you've enjoyed it, uh, be sure to like it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'd love to hear your comments. Do you agree with me? Should you ever shoot in a picture profile instead of log footage? Um, would you like to see a video explaining some of the settings and tips and tricks that I use with log footage? If I would have covered everything with log in one video, it'd have been way too long. So, I'm gonna break it up. This is kind of the introduction. Bottom line for this video, I want you to walk away with Feel free to use picture profiles. Don't feel like you always have to shoot in log. If you always shoot in picture profiles and you have the ability to shoot in log, give it a try. All of these are tools and resources we have as filmmakers in 2019 that can raise the level up. We live in a beautiful time to make video. And I encourage you guys, just do it. Just make videos, have fun. All right, let's get out of here. Once again, thank you for joining me. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't. Take care.